Acarif is firmware that uh, that runs the whole process. So it grabs the um, the, the demodulated information and uh, not demodulated sampled information and passes it onto USB, right? So between the, the antenna and the USB is a whole bunch of delay, and between the USB and the the program that you're running is a whole bunch of delay as well. So um, I had to write. I mean. I had to write software to do some to make them sync properly, like all the way up to USB. So with all the um, so I'm still plugged in. with all the little wires and stuff that are going on here, they basically signal each other and they'd say that um, you know this one says that it's the master, so it goes everybody ready, and then these ones go yep I'm ready, and then they all start, and then you get so if you if you're sampling at 20 mega samples a second you're only getting 50, milli, uh, 50 sample error rate. So it's basically the lined up at, at up to 50 at either side, uh, which is pretty good, I think. Um, but that took me six months. So <coughs> if you like, it's in the official firmware now. So when you get a hacker F, you'll get that code. So, uh, um, so having five meters between the two antennas, can't you put something that's blocking? Um, so the antenna facing the access point would be non-blocked. If that's if you're doing if you're doing that with um, you, you could do that um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to use amplitude basically. It's like a mini Faraday cage. Yeah. Two antennas. So I mean you could do what what Vickers was saying and put one sort of perpendicular they could put per perpendicular to each other I think but then you still have to move them around you still have to do stuff you know so with this delay. Um, you, they just sit there. You could put four of them in a, in a like a square, and then work out the delay without moving anything. So they all sit there. They're all omnis, and it's you know. I'll, I'll talk about the automatic stuff in a second, but um, yeah, I, I don't want to move anything. I want the thing to basically be independent and not do have to do any work. So. I'll talk about that in one second, that kind of thing. Um, so I kind of abandoned this whole thing. Um, this is still fun, and it still does work. Um, I can kind of show you what it looks like, although my demos are not going very well, so I think I'll <laughs> skip that. But um, this is very manual. So I basically, I didn't automate it. I've left it as it is. And I moved on to a thing called pseudo-doppler. Um, it's very hard to explain what pseudo-doppler is, um, but I will start by showing you the rig. Um, so these are four antennas. You've probably seen something like this on top of a police car or an ambulance or something, and they use they use pseudo Doppler um, to do direction finding for rescue and for whatever. Um, on the bottom of this is a hacker F. It may be Vickers's hacker F. I don't know. And the top of it is a, um, a thing called an opera cake. Uh, I don't know why they came up with that name, but it plugs into the hacker F and um, there are only three in the world, and I think I broke mine already, but um, it does it does kind of do what I wanted to do, so that's great. But um, okay, so what's great about this is you put that thing in the middle of an area, you only have to have one SDR, and it does a bit of magic with switching antennas, okay? And um, I was talking with my wife about how to explain Doppler, so who knows what Doppler is? Okay. So, <laughs> the simplest possible explanation of Doppler is the fire engine. You know, when you're a little kid and you're watching the fire engine, as it comes towards you, it makes a like a, a noise and it's it's pretty loud, and it's quite high pitched. And then as it comes towards you, it goes to a lower pitch, and as it goes away from you, it actually drops to a much lower pitch. So the B bar sound um, changes quite dramatically. So. Um, I won't go on about it, but basically the same thing can happen in with RF, with electromagnetic waves. So, um, and we can do something like spin a cage. We can have an antenna and put it on some sort of disc or something, and spin it really quick. And we can simulate that that Doppler. And then we get um, if we do a bit of RF magic, and I'm going to wave my hands a lot. Um, magic comes out the other side, and you can compare a known kind of frequency, which is related to the rotation rate, to the incoming signal. And you'll be able to see that they're moving like this, depending on how the actual incoming signal um, moves. 
Does everybody understand? Anyway, so basically, as it's moving around like this, it's getting closer to the signal if it's that direction. As it's moving away, it's getting further away. So that actually shifts the phase. So that's, that's the basic explanation. So if you look at the phase as well, the, the sinus wave as it travels in time, so it's up plus from zero degrees up to 19, all the way down again to 90, mm -hmm. neg negative 90. That's where the phase goes, up and down, up and down. So yes. It goes, it goes actually, if you think about a wave like that. Yeah, so I didn't explain the basics of the thing, which is that yeah, electromagnetic waves go up and down like that. So you can actually have a look at that. You can compare the two as they move around like that. Oh, are you comparing the phase or the frequency? The phase. Phase? Yeah. And that's the magic. I mean, basically, you're modifying the incoming signal so that it's in phase or out of phase with the, um, the sort of sampling frequency. Does that make sense? I don't really understand it, so I'm basically... So you know where, as it rotates, you know where it, what the position is. If you had a rotating thing, like that physically yeah. rotated the antenna, then maybe. You probably wouldn't have that much certainty about it. Yeah. But what this rig does here, it has a thing called an RF switch in it. Okay, and it switches between them, rotating by just jumping from one end to the next. And you know which one it's on. You know which one it's on, so you're actually getting the thing earlier, and then you're getting it later. later yeah. And then basically, if it's that kind of that direction, the phase shift is that way. So the um, problem with that is there's no firmware for it, and I'm writing the firmware. And I've kind of got a result. It sort of does work. I'm not going to show you because it probably won't work right now. But it, um, you can see. Um, you can kind of see the phases moving around each other. And uh, that's probably because of the way I'm switching it it's not switching at a regular rate, so I've got to do a lot of work. But yeah. So the pseudo dot pro is the fact that the antennas are jumping between their positions as opposed to smoothly moving between them. Yeah, and, and they're not physically moving, you're just right. sampling from different ones. Yeah. And the thing that I'd really like to do, and maybe I'll get the chance, is to actually not even bother with the switch. I just get four hacker Fs and connect them to antennas, sync them all up, and then I can just sample from each one. And then I know the rate down to yeah. exactly. So right now I still have to, the problem I have right now is I don't actually get the, the switching rate from the hacker F. I kind of have to assume you know, and calibrate and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of work to be done around it. But uh, so the goal for the last year has been to, um, to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to put it into a top hat that I'm going to make. And um, I'm, and then I want to go to DEF CON and I want to have a, a little display on the front that says switch over to Wi Fi. <laughs> That's actually my goal. Um, and there are other signals that we were talking about that you can, that are interesting at, at DEF CON. And, um, but uh, that's what I'm working towards. Please tell me your thesis is at least in this direction in some way. No, my thesis is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a hobby. You can't have a. At the end of your thesis, you're supposed to hit your, your thing that you do, right? <laughs> yeah, but you want the stuff by the end of the play. Oh, I love it. I still love it. So, <coughs> so this, will work at, the, this will work at other frequencies. It's not just for Wi-Fi. Um, so the, the trick with this thing is to know what the incoming like rate is. Like if it's a 9-6 board rate or something yeah. like that, what the demodulated rate is. So that's what makes it interesting. Like, you don't always know that. Yeah. But, it, but if you wanted to track a particular thing that was some other device and you knew enough about it, you could. Absolutely. Like someone with a, a, a 433 megahertz yes. remote, you can sit around at the mall. That's what I love about this, is inconspicuous. You can make it into something that doesn't look like what it is. And then you can just sit there and wait. Yeah. And, uh, and no one's going to murder you in your car seat <laughs> or whatever. But, um, yeah, and there are other there are people at uh, at DEFCON that do interesting things with your your cell phone. Um, there were quite a few unofficial stingrays there last year, and they they weren't actually they weren't legitimate apparently. So uh, I think there was something like twenty two. I mean, arrested too. Yeah, some people got arrested and stuff. So it'd be interesting to just walk around, gather information, and yeah. see what happens, and scan up and down the frequency range. Um, So that's it for me. Gonna, yeah. <laughs>
more questions. Um, I haven't seen anything. Um, it probably is commercial software. I, I bet there is. I mean, the guys downstairs have something. Um, it'll all be commercial. As far, I haven't seen any anything useful. One, one of the thoughts I had was um, these devices have amazing gyros and accelerometers, and I thought you could actually strap one to an antenna and get that um, if you're outside along with GPS and basically let it do all the work. You just do this. And it could probably do a much better job than, than us, you know. And it runs, uh, it, you can do C with this thing. You can, you can probably even get Python, Chris can get Python running on it. <laughs> it's a crazy fly. Sorry? It's a crazy fly. Crazy fly. No, no, no. That's a better one. <laughs> this one runs Python already. <laughs> Are you kidding? Okay. Is that, that it? Yeah. Um, uh, so can these things, for example, be used for kind of radar like applications? For what ra uh, radar? <coughs> uh, yeah, you can do a lot of interesting things, but um, it's kind of difficult because you um, the lag between, with the hacker refs at least, the lag between transmit and receive is a bit, a bit much. You can still do it. Um, and also you don't get enough information back from the device. But people have done all sorts of interesting things. They have done radar with that, so you could. And I think also you might have issues with licensing. You know, you're going to be sending it on. Somebody did a. There's a company in Stellenbosch that did a 2.4 radar uh, that you put in the back of your bike. I've forgotten what they're called. Um, does anybody know about that one? No. I think that's it. But, yeah. Well, what what frequency is that thing like? Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Cool. Go back to your scanning screen. I don't think I want to. <laughs> this time, this time it's, it, it'll be much more clear. Oh Wait, let me just let me just kill this uh, this thing. This is getting really annoying. Uh, where is it? Where is it, dude? I lost it. <laughs> uh, unplug the device. Sorry. You are Tina. Yeah. Tina is the box. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So it's going to be difficult to pinpoint the exact one, but you'll know something's in the vicinity. Would they be talking on the same frequency in and out, or, or not? Depends if it's full duplex or half duplex. Yeah, I think so. Well, Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I, I don't know if they have a transmitter and a receiver. So like, if, if they're meshing, so or so so the they have mask, separate? If you want to integrate the mask, Yeah, so it depends on the antennas they use. Mm. They use two antennas or one antenna. Yeah, so it will probably be half duplex then. I'm trying to think if the the new ESP32 has got two or not. They do only have one, so yeah, these ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, but you're saying the same frequency as in 2.4. Yeah, but well, different channels. It's Wi-Fi, so it's spread spectrum, 2.4 gigahertz. It's on a particular channel, but you're unlikely to have all the the, the things in your mesh on different channels. <laughs> but 
why not? I mean, you could. It makes yeah. more sense that way because you're yeah, going to. But then, but then, how would the nodes communicate with each other? They'd have to switch channels. Yeah, it's, it makes uh, it difficult because there's a lot of management overhead. Yes. So you're saying they all just go yeah. the same channel yeah. and everybody talks and receives. That's going to be channel. the simplest because of the fact that if you're going to run a wide spectrum like a 20 megahertz, uh, let's say 40 megahertz bandwidth, mm. you still have to then break that up into because you're sampling at the same time. It's for those little devices they won't be able to do that. At this point, it'll it'll have to be the same channel for now. Well, what you would see is you'd see like a very busy set of channels. Like one channel would be very busy everywhere you went. Yes. Like wherever you were. So you'd you kind of say, okay, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 Is that the recording device? I don't think that there wasn't an ESP to ESP. I think no, it's no, a, it was a, a laptop and a ESP. Yeah. Um, <laughs> higher gain on the receiver end. Yeah. But yeah. Th it's, it's not fast enough. Um, but you can, you can get reasonable distance out of it. And uh, you do get ESP modules where you can plug your own antenna in. Uh, they don't, they've got a connector for it. So this one here has a What's the MCZX connector. It's got a little. Little antenna and the external yeah. one, so you can actually plug in the two. Is that the MCCX connector? That little round flat one. It's not the MCX, it's the CFL. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, you get ESP modules with the same antenna. It's got an onboard and that, so you can just switch between them. Uh, and if you get that, you can get a higher gain antenna. The but yeah. it's not a bad distance. Yeah. But you're less conspicuous. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> Unless hey. you make it look like a cup. Make it look like a cup? Yes. <laughs> That'd be great. You put it in a, a, a fake light fitting. Well, like a, a, a fake fluorescent tube type thing. Just clip it in a light fitting. No one's yeah. see like a, like power or, or like a um, smoke detector. Yeah. No one's going to notice this. Like uh, hacker apps and stuff? Or? It's very difficult. Um, no, right now, there are no hacker apps anywhere because uh, it's not really Chinese customs apparently. But um, you can, I normally get them when I'm at DEF CON or I buy them off um, uh, not the GT. There's a, there's a German site, wimo.de, okay. W I M O.de. They also they sell them as well, but if they have stock. I think Vickers runs that one. <laughs> <laughs> If you, run through, if you run through DHL, I find it through DHL from Germany, no questions asked, you just have to pay the customs. Okay. So that's, it's, it's quite steep. And will it be all that from customs? No, DHL, DHL handles it on behalf of customs. Okay. So you pay a handling fee for that, but it, it is quite steep. It's like 900 to 1,000 Rand for handling fee, plus your customs, so you're looking at 1,400 Rand just for that. So it's, it's going to run you probably at 5,000 to 6,000 Rand for that unit. Yeah. I think you just find a friend that's in overseas just, somewhere. Just get somebody from America. Yeah. Someone who's coming through, coming over, just say, pick up one of these. I go every year, so. <laughs> There's going to be a mule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only take six at a time. Anyway, thanks everyone. Cool. I think that's all for me. Yeah.